What an honor and pleasure for me to introduce our own young and American born son of a very close friend of mine, who is Rabbi Avram Binsky, the founder of the first uh, community here in Flatbush. And it's a beautiful, beautiful opportunity for me to see a new generation of leadership emerging. Daniel, you need to unmute yourself and reveal yourself to us. Hello, hello, Rabbi Katzen. Thank you very much for hosting me. Oh, that's so beautiful. We hear the noises and we see a beautiful nature. Daniel, Daniel. Oh, that's yes, so beautiful. We will, okay, we how are you? That. Yeah, wonderful. How are you, Rabbi Katzen? That's so beautiful. Daniel, first of all, where are you? Where am I? Yeah. I'm just close location. No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm in Pennsylvania. You're in Pennsylvania. Uh, Poconos? Poconos, yes. Poconos. How do I know? Because that's a favorite place of many Russians escaping. Absolutely. The hit. We came uh, to check on the flock. The hit of the beautiful, you know, Brooklyn, New yes. York currently. I suggest, by the way, you can a little bit, yes, make us a little bit the headspace, a little bit, yes, put the phone or whatever the iPad you have. Exactly, exactly. Uh, okay, okay, beautiful. What an honor and pleasure once again seeing you. Daniel, first of all, um, um, it's so beautiful that we actually able to speak English, correct? Because very often I speak to uh, yes. Russian Jews, you know, Russian, but with you we can uh, talk English. I want to first... It's not so easy for me, but I'll try. I know that. I know that. First of all, um, you know, you know my children, correct? You know my children, and my children yes. are looking up to you. They are looking up to you. Okay. Uh, and for many of us, you're a source of inspiration. And you know that for a son of a rabbi, it's not simple to be a rabbi. If you don't mind, Daniel, uh, you look at, look at this exactly, exactly. Be air, and again, put a little bit at the top frame, a little bit lower. Put a little bit lower. Exactly. Put exactly, exactly. Put be your, your be yourself, your own cameraman. Okay, be your own cameraman, and we need you to be in the center, and this distance is a little smaller. Exactly. Okay. Excellent. Very good. Very good. So Daniel, how was it for you to be raised to be raised as a son of a rabbi? when your father was building a shul, building community, paying attention to so many people, so many couples, guiding them, teaching them. And you were a quiet child, you know, speaking English and all these people were speaking Russian. How was it for you? It was really interesting. First of all, if I was a quiet child, it was a matter of opinion. Um, <laughs> for some I wasn't, for some I wasn't. Um, it was interesting. At the same time, 
I learned a tremendous amount specifically from being surrounded by so many different types of people of all shapes and for all from coming from all different we understand that coming from the Soviet Union every city is its own country everyone has their own mentality and and it was it was a tremendous tremendous learning experience and that's why parents made it out to be and we were always encouraged languages was always encouraged and it's only helped knowing Russian knowing the other languages that I speak Daniel, um, do, do you mind, I'll, just because I'm, you know, I, I don't want to be perfectionist, but I just want one thing. Do you mind making a stop, a step, just a little bit to the right, your right, move a little bit to the right, move a little bit to the right, a little, no, it's too much. You see yourself, excellent. Can you be a little bit, oh, no, a little bit higher. We need a little bit higher. Exactly, okay, that's better. Okay, very good. I'll try to maintain that. Yeah. Okay, maintain this or, or put the camera a different way. Either one. The camera's not going anymore. Okay. Okay. Yes. I no, but right now you're in the you're in the corner right away. You are in the corner of the screen. Exactly. Now you're in the center. How about this? Exactly. Ah. How about this? I have a better idea. You know what you can do? Let's. You yes. can take this phone or iPad in front of you. Can even watch. hold it. Yeah, I can hold it. Okay. I can hold it. Has it. Okay, that's beautiful. That is better. Beautiful. Uh, no, it's not better. It's perfect. Wonderful. Now it's perfect. Now, now I enjoy seeing Good. you as well. Exactly. Okay. Once again, uh, I guess not now only we can make a lechaim, right? Lechaim, yeah. Rebekatsin. Lechaim, lechaim. Yes, I testify you made a bracha. Uh, and I want to tell you, Daniel, that yes, not only you were not a quiet then, child, but you were a child who inspired everybody here from our community. I remember Yevrei Skimir, the Jewish World newspaper, uh, Hanukkah concert. And the star on stage was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, like 11, 12 years old, Danny Binsky, uh, singing Jewish songs, and everybody was um, crazy about you. Am I right? Danny, are you with us? I see that your screen somehow is, yes. Danny, are you with us? Excellent, very good, okay. I'm with you, you froze okay. a little bit. Okay, we, we, now we're unfrozen, okay. So tell us again, uh, growing to the Russian parents in America and parents who were very busy building the community, how did you feel? Did you feel abandoned, neglected? or you felt loved and respected, or you had mixed feelings, and how you were able to emerge loving Jewish stuff. Because you could blame this Jewish stuff for not getting enough attention. Um, just can you repeat the question again? You cut off in the middle. I, I was asking you, growing up as a son of a rabbi, it's a, it's a special greatness to be a rabbi, a son of a rabbi. If you know, in musicians, almost doesn't exist. A famous composer, almost except for Bach, nobody has children composers. In scientists, children don't perform. There is a Russian expression that nature is resting with children. And that was the greatest trait of Yitzchak that even though his father was great, Yitzhak was great in his own way. So I want to understand your greatness and the challenges. Uh, but the first challenge, being, being a son of a rabbi, and I have my children that also children of a rabbi, and it wasn't simple for them because they were jealous. I'm telling you open. They were jealous seeing, you know, neglected in a way by Shabbos table, or I was busy day and night speaking to other people, always on the phone, always in the shul, always in Sinai Academy, always at the rage. And how did you feel about being raised by a rabbi and rabbits and your wonderful mother? Um, I'm one of a different experience, people, not for personal gain, rather giving people just for the cause of good, just to make someone feel better. 
just to help someone, just to make someone's load a little lighter. And it was, I think, the authenticity that was evident. Yes, there were many hours and it wasn't always easy. And yes, my parents are busy, we're busy, are busy. But at the same time, we felt like we were all part of this monumentous mission and we were all in it together and we all participated in it. And I think that's why I had a, my, my, my parents definitely d invested a lot in us, even though they were busy and even though they were doing a bunch of stuff to still give us the time, both collectively and personally. And in, instead of, a, it, and I think that's what helped you know, grow up with a positive taste and a, and a will, you know, to continue and to do the same. And let me ask you, Daniel, when you were growing up and even now, like, did you decide I want to be a rabbi like my father or you wanted to be a, a singer, you have a tremendous talent uh, or you wanted to be a, a businessman who will help his father to do what father needs to do, right? Uh, so did you ever like have a question about what to do with your life? I've definitely had the question. I was always leaning towards communal service. Some that I wanted, I wanted, you know, to be involved. I wanted to, I enjoy, I enjoy making people happy. So whatever way that may be, what it ended up being was combining the music, combining the and combining everything into one great harness of faces. Excellent. Excellent. Daniel, I know that you have few patients and since speaking about you, I cannot hide from um, our friends that are watching you right now. Many, many people actually with us on Facebook. Yes, many, I actually would want to say hello to uh, my sister who I know is watching us from Nevada. Hello, <laughs> wow. Miriam. Yes. Amazing, amazing. And there are many, many friends watching and leaving messages as we go. Uh, they, yes, can hello also, to all. They, they can also actually ask questions if they want, they can even send sure. their questions to you. But I want, first of all, to tell you that you are amazing and you are an inspirational leader. You know why? Because I know that you deeply care about, first of all, your family. I know that. And I know that you deeply, deeply care for your community and you're really a source of joy and inspiration for so many families within your father's shul and you're a junior rabbi, but you were always um, the heart as well, uh, together with your father and your mother. You were part of the team and inspiring people on, on Hanukkah concerts, on Purim and, and everywhere, but you went beyond that. I know at least three projects that you involved that I wanted you to comment. And I would love to uh expand on that maybe something i'm missing actually i said three i already know four first of all you dedicate to continuously learning and and the sounds of your children are not in any way bothering us you can even hold them there we go and they should be together with you i think it is amazing to see that is your most important project daniel okay that is your most important project so we are so happy to see you and please introduce uh, who's on your lap. We have this, um, uh, we have this uh, stuff. Say hi. Say hi. Interesting. Yes. Daniel, you know what it is, I think. You want, I'll give you, uh, I'll give you my five cents advice. Okay. I believe that this iPad that you're holding your hands is connected to internet through Wi-Fi. Am I right? I'll try to get. No, no, no. Wait a second. Closer. No, no, no. I'm not about closer. Yes, yes. You needed either a regular phone with a good internet connection, or you need to stand right near your Wi-Fi, and I hope it will uh, be good. So get very close okay. to your Wi-Fi connection. Okay, Daniel. Otherwise, we're going to be few. Um, every few seconds, we're going to stop. So exactly. Now you're doing. In other words, you're not, you're teaching us a lesson. You need to get closer to the source. Am I right? Get yes. Closer. Is it better now? It is so much better. It's clear, and I hope we're not going to get interrupted. Once again, I want to say a few things that you do, as far as I know. Number one, you are a learning and growing person. You committed to your personal growth, and you continue learning Jewish wisdom. Am I right? Uh, yes. Number one. And you do it in a very organized way, committing your time to that. 
not just in theory. Yes. Number one, as far as I know, you are also teaching others and you created a new program for uh, girls uh, from Pinsk, from Belarusia, that come and you lead an institution um, of Jewish education for college students or college age students that are coming from Pinsk, Minsk and other places in White Russia. Am I right? Yes, yes. Number three, what you do as a volunteer, which is totally, absolutely amazing. You are involved in Bikur Choylem, which means you visit sick in hospitals and, and in, Kings, in Kings Highway Hospital and other places. You yes, and come and you visit. I don't know if you're allowed to walk in right now, but before that, we were very busy with that. And more, as part of this amazing kindness of helping the sick, you do something courageous. And I hope you'll forgive me if I'll reveal you involved in Hebra Kadisha, which means yes. honoring the dead. And, and volunteers come to a morgue of a hospital and respectfully prepare uh, the body for the burial. And you help with the burials as well, which is really unbelievable. Okay, that's not, uh, not everybody is capable of doing it, but it done out of love and respect for the Jewish people and the community. It's unbelievable service. And as well, you're involved in something else. Uh, there are so many, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, teens at risk. Yes. And some of them in pain. Some of them are actually called kids in pain. Am I right? Yes. Kids in pain. I think there is a word, kin, kid in Kip. pain. Kip. 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 Kid in pain. And, and what they need, they need someone to show warmth and love and unconditional acceptance. Very few people in the world are able to do it and save these lives from drugs, from abuse, and basically from death. From death, yes. And you do that. Please expand. Okay. <laughs> um, first of all, I would like to say that I'm, I'm very humbled to be able to do all these things. I don't necessarily I credit myself for it. I view it as a privilege and a and an, and a, a mission that was given to me. You know, but the way my life was led and the way you know God led me through my life experiences and family upbringing and what I've seen by my parents. Um, I, I would say that one led to another. Really, it wasn't like I decided one day to do this and one day to do that and one day to do something else. One thing led to another. And I, it started out with the community, obviously, which I was born into, and the sense of responsibility to um, maintain, to continue, to expand the mission of the community, at the same time realizing to be there for the community in any way possible. So, that led me to, you know, starting out with the hospitals and then starting out with Hebra Kadisha, with, you know, taking care of the deceased. That was because I just believe that, and it's been proven, you know, in my experience, that when someone is faced with such a critical and crisis situation, when there is a familiar face that shows up at the scene and is there to hold your hand, you could be the wealthiest man in the world. And I've had that, very successful people and very you know, influential people. But when they lost their mother, they lost their mother. And when they had someone that they knew and were comfortable with, it made a world of a difference. Now, once I started dealing with the deceased and preparing people for, you know, for, the, uh, for the next step, you know, it gave me a new perspective on people. You know, working with people who are so selfless, who you see on the street, who, you would never think, whatever, who, like regular people, all of a sudden you discover that these are amazing people who will give the short of their back for another human being. And then you, and then the actual work gives you just a whole different perspective on life, a different perspective on people, a new appreciation for life and people, not to judge, etc., etc. Which led me, and the experiences of sometimes having to deal with young people overdosing and young, young people in serious trouble 
just it was all a continuation of wanting to help and wanting to make better and wanting to make someone feel accepted, loved, because that is the foundation of being able to grow and develop oneself. You know, Daniel, I, I want to tell you that in a way I'm jealous um, and, and with the wide jealousy, of course, because I see you and I have such joy Nachas, seeing you. But at the same time, I am jealous for the Russian community because we unfortunately also have a lot of pain, a lot of drug abuse, yes, uh, a lot of um, overdoses and deaths okay. as well. Yes. And, and as you and I know that even in a medical profession of uh, mental health and trying to save these people, it is all about spirituality. It is about yes. searching for meaning and purpose. Uh, all the uh, rehabilitation centers, uh, what they do their whole day is actually helping people either through um, uh, Alcoholic Anonymous and Narcotic Anonymous programs or other programs to help these people to find meaning in life. Otherwise, they're just escaping into the dream world of drugs. Yeah. So, but it is a result of lack of spirituality. Their parents came to America, they wanted to be rich. They didn't really clarify for themselves, why are they here? What purpose are they here? Not only in America, in this world. And when we have you, Danny, dealing with children of religious people on the streets of Brooklyn, I said to myself, would you be able to relate to uh, children of secular Russian Jews that also need you. Um, I think I can. I have been. That that was that 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 part came before the streets. The streets is a is a. I was raised with relating specifically to secularity. However, I do find, you know, that a common denominator between everyone on the street is, I don't know, there's some sort of thing in the world today of of truth seeking. Seeking the truth, which is very, you know, coming out a lot in young people. Young you people know, have... Daniel, uh, unorthodox question. I'm going to ask you an unorthodox question now. Go ahead. Okay. A few of them. Yes. One of them, um, I hear noise. Right now I'm here and I hear noise. I don't know what this noise is going on on my East 22nd Street. You were raised on East 21st Street. We are around the corner. Our, we, we, we can probably see each other like through yes, my sure. backyard. At your, so, but I hear noise and I hear like some, you know, loud speakers. I don't know exactly what's going on, but I would not be surprised that the peaceful rioters <laughs> Uh, pacing through my street right now. Very possible, okay? I hope not. Uh, well, I don't know. Someone actually um, made noise trying to come in and I'm busy. I am sorry, I cannot open the door. Uh, but I don't know. Is it police trying to help us or maybe rioters? I don't know what it is. <laughs> uh, but I want to ask you, when you see what's going on now and whole rebellion and craziness and looting and murder, what is your comment on that? I see two things. I see, I see a portion of people protesting, which is uh, as people part of part of the you know the ability to express yourself. But I do see an overwhelming number of of people. Um, just one second, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One second, please. Okay, so while, uh, while uh, Rabbi Binsky Jr. is um, uh, on mute, I do hear some sounds actually, and I hope it's all peaceful by us. And um, interesting, if you hear us right now and you have your opinion, uh, you can also post it and you can also post uh, your questions. And uh, my uh, question to Daniel will be actually, that he needs to, how can we help those writers? And more importantly, how not to be a writer within. So we hope that Daniel will actually re we Hello. Welcome, we welcome you back. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yeah, we took um, the pause and meanwhile. Yeah, so your comment was that you on one hand uh, respect their right to demonstrate and what else? As long as it's done in a peaceful fashion, and the minute
there you see destruction coming out of something. You know that the root is not is not good because anything anything productive, anything good, is there for a productive purpose. The minute you see people getting hurt, people getting killed, people getting damaged. I, I remember if I'm, I'm sure you remember of it, when the years ago there was a blackout in the summer. I was around 10 years old, 11 years old. I still remember my father. The air conditioner wasn't working. There was no light. He would come in the middle of the night every few hours to wet our face that we should feel like a little bit ear. And I remember at the time, it was a big deal that there was no looting and no stealing and no nothing, none of that. Because there was another blackout probably before I was born or maybe when I was very, very little where that did happen. And that's all the same. It's taking advantage of a situation, taking advantage of a crisis to, to do no good. And, and that's not okay. Daniel, I want, I, want to, I want to connect your experience with uh, kids in pain and rioters in pain, saying that I believe that this is their pain and their anger, first of all, against themselves, is expressed. Now, we may ask why uh, so much anger. It is because maybe they're still angry at the white people who brought them here and mistreated them badly. And maybe they built this country in a way uh, on their bones. Uh, and the injustice that was done to them um, uh, carries on until today. Uh, they feel discriminated and uh, they feel that the society is still racist. Many white people feel the same vice versa saying that if you have a white kid and a black kid, and they both know exactly the same, the white kid will not get in the high school he wants. And the white kid will not get in the college he wants. And the white kid will not get a job he wants. So right now, actually the society discriminates vice versa. They're giving more rights uh, to the blacks. If you look at statistics, this horrible murder of this black man should be condemned, of course. Absolutely. But if you look through the amount of arrests that are taking place in interactions between police officers and the black people in America, if I'm not mistaken, it's something like 350 and a millions a year. So if you see these few tragic incidents uh, taking place from time to time, definitely it's not the rule in this country. So it doesn't mean that we need to riot and, and, and loot and, and kill. So, and if this is happening, this is not just about that or this, it's about I am a victim. So we have people that are in pain and people who feel victimized for generations. And you also see Jewish people who were murdered and victimized in the Holocaust, but they did not bomb uh, Germans. They did not destroy Germany and didn't, we didn't go back to kill all the Germans as a revenge. Uh, and we decided instead of being involved or in pain and, and forever feel ourselves as victims, we somehow emerged uh, as responsible people leading forward our communities and our country. Rebuilding. Rebuilding, not destroying. So if you're speaking to the rioters, imagine the rioter will enter this room and I'll tell him, my friend, come in. And I'm going to put him right here near me. And I'll tell him, here's a young rabbi who wants to tell us something. What do we tell him? First, I would offer him a drink. Well, virtually you can uh, coke. Yes. Right? Coke. Yes. Okay, very good. <laughs> and then that's a Russian way, actually. <laughs> uh, it's a Russian way. I, ho I hope they will relate to that way. Okay. And what else? Yeah. And after that? Um, and after that, I would, I, if the person is open to conversation, and I believe that if he is respected as a human being, that's the first thing I would do and give him to understand by my conduct and by the way that I'm speaking to him that he, in my eyes, he is a human being created in the image of God. When someone is, is, um, is interacted with in such a manner, he'll act in such a manner. The thing I believe, and I may be wrong, you know, many of them don't believe that they're in the image of God. We believe that every human being is created with, it's not just a, a body made of, uh, you know, brick and mortar or made out of dirt. Every body has a soul. Every, everyone, is, everyone is a world. And when we refer to, when we talk to someone in such a manner, they respond in kind. Obviously, you know, 
there's no excuse for for um, you know killing and looting and all that stuff and that has to be dealt with but if you're asking on a one-on-one and how we would talk to someone if the guy wants to talk i'm open by the way um it's very interesting that some people very much accuse a russian community of being racist Racist, it means being scared of the African-American community. At the same time, I have to tell you my personal opinion. Uh, I'm not only colorblind, not only that. I believe, and I really felt it unrelated to uh, even learning Torah. Somehow, maybe it's my bringing, I don't know why. But I'll tell you something. The Talmud says, Habib Odom Shenivra Batselem. How wonderful or how beautiful or how i don't know what the word haviv how beloved yes is a human being who's created in the image of god so it is a responsibility of every human being looking into another human being seeing the spark of holiness within him and the the, uh, the beauty and the spirituality and the hidden light more than that the talmud asks why we were all created from one adam couldn't we be created right away? Almighty God can create millions of people right away, or billions of, if he wants, like what stops him? Remember what Talmud answers? Not in the moment. So I'll, I'll just remind you. Enlighten first, me, please. The first, no, 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 just, I'm just sorry putting you on the spot, but Gemara no. asks, Gemara answers, Mishnah answers, and the, there is a very deep discussion. The first lesson is to teach you that someone who destroys one soul as he destroys the entire world because look you see all these people the entire world came from one man to teach you the value of one man if you kill one man you potentially kill the entire world but if you save just one soul as if you save the entire world and the other lesson is when you kill somebody Cain killed and Hashem Esim, the bloods of your, uh, the bloods of your brother screamed from, from underneath the ground. Why the bloods? Because you didn't just kill him, you killed the potential of the entire world emerging from him. And the next lesson is, is the uniqueness of men. Look, God created the world and light like men, the man creating in his image, you make a stamp and all coins are the same. All bills are the same, but God creates people in uh, his image. And what do you see? You see that every human being is unique and every human being is needed and his contribution to humanity is unique. So respect yourself. Respecting image of God, it means respecting your holiness and your uniqueness, which is the same word. And more importantly, do you know why God God created a man and, and singular? It is that nobody should ever say, my fathers are better than yours. My color is better than yours because we're all descendants of one man. So, in, so, so in a way we will accept, uh, first of all, every human being as an image of God, regardless of his color and his religion. And uh, we will not think, oh, he has a different color, different religion. He's a stranger. Let's be scared of him. We respect him the way he is. We don't need to convert him into Judaism. Mm -hmm. We believe that he uh, may inherit the world to come by his deeds and his faithfulness to his own principles and values. He doesn't need to necessarily be like me, number one. And number two, I think that we see every human being as um, a partner, as a brother. We all brothers and sisters. So of course that should be the message, probably, right? Am I right? Absolutely. Uh, but if more a, than if that, I would, I would even take it a little further, um, if I may. Of course. That the you know everyone is indispensable. No one was created by mistake. And I just like you have a, a, a huge harmonious philharmonic orchestra, and for the bystander, he won't understand why you need five hundred fifteen violins. What's wrong with ten? What's wrong with thirteen? But the seasoned conductor will see, and I can say this as a musician, that there's something missing. There's something missing, and every little detail makes a difference. And every person is, is important. And when someone believes that, you know, it says in the Pirkei Ovis, so one of the, uh, you know, the, the commentaries explain, make yourself into a Rav. Make yourself into someone important. 
If you view yourself as someone important, you'll behave that way. You know what? I, there is something missing. I'll tell you what. I hear the voices of birds singing. Huh? <laughs> is, and I hear other, other beautiful noises of your children. I'll tell you what is missing in this beautiful harmony of orchestra. I think your blessing with the Jewish melody. I know, I'm, I, as I said to you, I promised you, I'm going to be unorthodox today. Okay, so I'm asking you unorthodox things. Uh, <laughs> and my brocha to you, Daniel, is that you should emerge as a leader of a new generation. We need leadership of young Russian Jews. We need educated and committed and loving and respecting people like you are. So, Daniel, we need you. Okay, I'm sending you an open uh, heart and, and, and a hug and a blessing. We really need you. When I'm, I'm speaking about we, I don't mean need, me necessarily personally, if I do need you, but we need new generation of leadership emerging. We need your uh, brother-in-law, Bin Yemen, send him my warmest regards. I will. Okay, we need leaders who will train new generation of leaders who speak English, not like me with an accent. So we also need a loving heart. So if you were to send your friends, your uh, community, some message of love or maybe joy, despite the destruction and fear, because a lot of fear, people are scared. <gasps> what if the guys will come to my door? I don't have a gun. How come Mayor de Blasi and the city administration took away guns from us? But the murderers have guns. So what do we do? How do we defend ourselves? The people are full of fear. And it's so beautiful that your children want you. So I want to let you go. But before that, sing us a melody from your heart, from heart, from your heart to our hearts. So I, I think I'll sing a melody without words because that is the language of the heart that everyone can connect to. So whoever is whoever is listening, just join along. This is a melody of someone who exuded love, Rabbi Shlaim Kalbach who that was, that was his life's mission to, of love and acceptance and bringing happiness to people. And I think that that is the biggest conqueror of any evil, any bad. As you know, the, the, the great P.S.S. Nerebbe from who, who really held everyone up in the war so ghetto in the most difficult times would tell his students, the biggest thing you can do is to do a good deed for someone else. And sometimes you think, what is that? What, what did I accomplish? No, you're, you're, you're adding good into the world. We, Everyone that does a, a good deed, that, that, that our sages teachers, Levenshi and I am a color, just a smile to someone could not only make him happy, it could keep him alive. It gives life. A good deed, showing that you care, showing that you love and accept, gives life. It, it makes the world a better place. And that's what we should all, and I think that's what this melody speaks. Everyone join me. I want to thank you, but I want to tell you one thing that I learned from a wonderful composer and an expert in music, Vladimir Zak, who wrote a book, Shestakovich Yevrei, 
Shostakovich and Jews. And he said that the name of a great composer, Shostakovich, that the beauty of the Jewish music is that it sounds in the beginning like minor, but it really emerges as major. As and a major, yes. Music, and the Jewish music is overcoming sadness and fear Absolutely. to joy. So in this melody that you're saying right now, can you show us the moment how, so to speak, minor suddenly major. emerges with courage? Identify this um, music and explain it because Torah is music, Torah is song. Explain right. this song musically. So I would say it starts off soft, starts how? off na, 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 na. Da, 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 Imagine da, yourself da, walking in a forest, walking on a road. Or maybe and even, not just soft, or maybe even seeing injustice and asking why and being down because of something hurtful or painful. Correct? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Continue. In other words, this is the minor part. Continue. And then you see the light and you see the clarity. When? And that's when, when it goes. So that what happens there is, in my opinion, is that it starts off as this one revelation, one clarity. And then it gets stronger and more and more, and it ends off serene. It ends off calm. So that time, and I think, and, and then when you come back to, so to speak, minor, then you have the serenity knowing that even darkness, you're not alone. Even the challenges, you're not alone. And therefore, it's beginning with minor, then suddenly moving to major. And when you return back to minor, this minor is a different minor. More serene. It is minor with Hashem, but Dovid Shamelech said, what did Dovid say about this? You remember the Mizmor le Dovid? Right, what, does it, what are the even, words Even there? if I shall walk in the valley of death, I fear no evil because you are with me. Correct. And you are with me means that even when it's dark, even when, even when it seems minor, but because I'm with you, Hashem, it's really major. Sing this melody again for us, because I think that our friends will understand it on a different level. In other words, make three. First is minor, major, and then leave us with a new minor, which is already essentially major, and hope, and the moon, and, ba and, and faith in the future. <laughs> There are so many things that happen around me that I just don't understand. La da da la da 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 la da 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 la da 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 but from that darkness, I see your hand, Hashem, taking me and leading me. La da da da, la da 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 da, la da 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 da, being with you fills my heart with joy. La da da la da 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 da, la da 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 da, I'm fortunate. To be yours. I'm sending you, Daniel, all my <laughs> blessing and my heart. Uh, we love you and we believe in you. And most importantly, we need you very much, Daniel. Okay? To Thank you continue. so much, Rebecca Zinn. Thank you. Have a wonderful continue. day. Thank you so much to all our viewers. All the best. Thank you all. Thank you.